Okay. All right. Brothers, uh, sister, shall we have a little uh, share some things, brother, sister, this morning? Yes. Okay. But, uh, brother Andre, you're there? Yeah. Yes, brother. Right I'm here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so nice. Actually, I was listening to you praying in tongues. It was so nice when I, I got up early in the morning because I'm on a different time zone. Uh, I I had a class last night for, I usually teach, I mean, I usually share my word. I don't want to be talking teaching uh, because that looks very condescending, you know, like I'm a teacher, you're you know, we all, all we have the whole the same Holy Spirit. So I usually work with uh, uh, priests, Roman Catholic priests, and with pastors, and uh, share the word. Now, why I'm doing it? Well, it just happens to be the way it happened. So today I'll 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 share something which is key to all this Bible, and. Uh, and, and, and we've heard it before. It's called the love of God. God is love. So uh, let me try to approach it from a different angle. Okay. I, I know that we've all heard it and we know the scriptures. But I will start with a question. And, you know, this morning, uh, does God know uh the end from the beginning. In the beginning, does he know what's going to happen? Anybody wants to answer, please? Does God know what's going to happen? Yes, yes. Okay, sister says yes. All right. Uh, I, I, Isaiah, we won't go there much, but Isaiah 46.10 says that. Maybe I will do that for a, just to warm up. Pastor Andre, we have some time, no? Yeah, yeah, you got a lot of time. No problem. Okay, I think you'll all enjoy this, huh? Surely. It's asking very fundamental questions. I don't go into some really undifferent. So, so in 46.10 of Isaiah, he says, everything I plan will come to pass. For I do whatever I wish. I declare the end from the beginning. And from long ago, what is not yet done. My plan saying, my plan will take place and I will do all my will. So, the point is, he will comes to pass and he knows it eventually, right? Now, what does that mean? Does he know who's going to be going to hell and who's going to be going to heaven? Now, you know, if he knew that somebody was going to fail, and he was going to hell. I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, what's the point in trying even? And the person saying, I'm already, the person is saying he's already slated to go to hell, right? What's the chance now? I mean, it's like, seems like a, you know, it, you know, some of these court cases in, in some uh, places, you know, which are like, uh, um, uh, where there's no law, some dictator takes over, and first only, they have this mock trial, and then they killed. And the guy knows, like Saddam Hussein or somebody, that he's going to die. But he's there listening and having this whole facade. So is this some sort of, a, in, in, our, in our part of the world, it's called Natak, some sort of a drama that we do? Now, if he knew that, all right? So if, for example, let me ask you a question. Did God know that Adam and Eve were going to sin? Sister, brother? Yes. He did. Well, then, <laughs> then you know, how can we sort of, why did he create knowing that Adam and Eve are going to sin and sin is going to come into this world? And if he knew all that, we read in Isaiah, right? I'm not asking you to tell me. Isaiah 46.10, he says, I will declare the end from the beginning, right? I will declare the end, the result. From the beginning. Now, what's the point in us sitting it? It's already like that. It's a match, it is fixed. 
why are you watching it it's like the hindi you know india pakistan what are you watching it is already fixed is match is fixed so what are we watching what are we doing okay uh let's you know if you go to revelation 13:8 this just confirms it further it says that the lamb was slain before listen we all know okay jesus went on the cross and he is the lamb of god right but it says he was slain before the foundation of the world so before god made the foundation jesus was slain did you ever think you know that's that's a different let me put on the air conditioner is getting hot okay see this is the kind of uh background i come from sorry to say and uh, i wasn't going to share my testimony but it that will take really a long time because we need to address this question right i mean is this a fixed match which is fixed and we are just playing this game knowing who's the winner or i mean this whole thing the satan jesus on the cross i mean how do you mean jesus on the cross he was slain before the foundation of the world so what did he have to go to the cross again for did you think about it you know by you know that's that's when i i i didn't come i my background is actually pure science the religion to me was superstition all right i came from a religion that is well i won't name it in view of the political issues but but it was this and i came oh i came from goa so there are a lot of you know christians primarily catholics they were friends of mine so when i came there was no point in coming and 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 doing this bible because it was intellectually to me not holding together i mean if god is there fundamentally why can bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people and the question is like we said if he so loved us as john 316 says on the other hand we have an old testament where he seems to be angry merciless killing people and then suddenly flips and what is it he changes his mind huh i mean it's like you know it reminds me of a schizophrenic person you know one day he's got this mood with very friendly he gives away everything next morning he's he's really um in a different mood. is god having moods but malachi says that i will not change right jesus is the same yesterday today and forever right but on the other hand it appears from what we read that he seems to be vacillating and then you have questions questions you know i'll tell you a little story there is a you must have heard of this person called billy graham right uh, when billy graham started there was a person who was a colleague of his called john templeton and both of them were together having made they started they were having the uh, cruises that came later but uh, they all started together now over time and and actually this john templeton was having a very massive ministry i mean they were together but they were not having the same ministry billy graham and this john templeton was highly successful and if you follow his life you know but this is well known eh? you don't have to follow his life uh, but you see it suddenly john templeton stops zero and then he has these questions and this is a top quality massive preacher he questions himself and says all this i'm teaching is this true and then i think i saw his questions on 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 youtube only and many questions and fundamentally saying if god is saying all this stuff which i mentioned i mean i didn't take my questions from john templeton i just came to know this recently when i was googling his life not that i study spend my time learning other people i study primarily with the word of god 
I'm not like, you know, looking for uh, all this worldly stuff, but it's interesting to know. It's like a saint, right? I mean, what, what motivated um, Billy Graham? And then in that story is this John Templeton incident. John Templeton was a Canadian. Billy Graham was an American. They grew up together. They went to the same seminary. And Doc, John Templeton, though highly successful, says, you know, I'm not, I'm not leading the people right. And then he writes his books and then he drops off. Huh? That's the end. I mean, that's the end of John Templeton and, and, and end of a major, major ministry that the world was being blessed. I think this was in the 1950s. And John Templeton had questions that I'm raising. So, the, I was telling Brother Andre, how did I get saved? Uh, somebody took me to a retreat, not retreat, uh, they call it teaching of some American person called Bill Winston who came in Secunderabad. And for three days, that is 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of February, 2006, he only taught on faith, the word of God. There was no nothing else, just pure word of God. And I wasn't going to change my mind about anything. But on the third day, he invited people to give their life to Jesus, to accept Jesus as the Lord, God, and Savior, as per Romans 10, 9. That is confessing with your mouth when you believe in your heart. Now, you know, the most miraculous thing happened, and I can go on telling that, but miracles come and go. But what happens is there, I go in the front, and I, he, he, he prescribes to me a certain salvation prayer, you know, just normally, just accepting Jesus as your Lord, God, and Savior. And I say it. Now, that was totally, totally, totally unacceptable. But what happens is, you must be knowing that who are we? We are spirits, right? We live in a shell, like I have this shirt in this body. And we have a mind, we call it roughly, roughly, approximately, soul is a mind. Of course, it's much more than a mind. But, you know, if I try to describe all the effects, and the Bible doesn't describe it with precision, actually. All right. And, uh, and, and sometimes it is also seen as, um, depending on the Old and the New Testament, the definition of soul changes. But the mind is a very good approximation. So we have spirit. We, uh, we are spirits. God is a spirit. The demons are spirits. Angels are spirits. This is a spirit world. We have a mind and we just live in a, in a body. Now, so what happened that day? I'm just, you know, going a little fast because this is my first initiation into, you know, this uh, trying to start this morning. Uh, the, what happened that day is that three days of hearing and hearing by the word of God, my soul, there was a, see, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews uh, 12, 4 says that it's a double-edged sword which cuts and operates into your system, okay, into your bone marrow. Now, it actually operated into me. The word of God operated to me. Now, you know, that is what it is, as, as Hebrew says. Now, I'm sorry, it's 412. I didn't see it. So, it operated into me, and there the spirit of God, my dead spirit, was and, you know, it became alive because it was the spirit of God came and lived in. But however, however, my so this didn't happen because of my mind. All right. Somehow the anointing and that man's uh, commandment, and he did, I think, make a statement like, Satan, let that man go. Whatever he did for that moment per, per, uh, permitted me to be born 
you know, to be accepting Jesus as my Lord, God, and Savior would be called being born again. Now, please, huh? I don't go into all the denominations, being born again is non-Catholic and all that. Listen, it doesn't matter to me. It's only Jesus that matters, okay? Right? It's only Jesus. Now, I'm not into the politics, whether BJP or Congress. It's just like India matters, okay? So, <laughs> Jesus matters, and that's all it is. Now, so that day, I was born again, but however, uh, my mind, when I came back, when this thing got over, my mind was like, hey, what did I do? All right. And uh, then the people gave me a Bible to some friends who had taken me there. He's now 87 years old, he and his wife. His name is Patrick. And when I read the Bible, of course, you know, Bible isn't easy to book to read, especially if you start with Matthew. You, know? <laughs> you wonder what the book is about. Even John, which is so powerful now, it's like in the beginning was the word. When was this? You know, I thought you will tell me. Oh, I thought the Bible previously was all thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. I know this is it. That's what I got, you know, and it's all about listening to all the talks that thou shall, you know, I, I came from another religion and this is another religion. We we considered Monday a good day and this was Sunday a good day. We did, uh, this guy did, had, they did Lent, we did Sravan, they did, uh, they took uh, communion, we took Prasad. So it was all like one substituted by the other. And I was asking myself, what is it? It's the same thing. It's just life insurance policies by another company. So that's the time I started looking at the Bible. And uh, I, I'll name him uh, Andrew Womack. I just happened to see it. It's not that I was easy. And when I heard him, I, I heard a lot of people. But the word of God sort of, he took a fair view all right, for the type of person I was. He wasn't like, you will go to hell, you will go to hell. It was like, you know, he was really analyzing the Bible and making it come alive. And the word was coming alive. And that, you know, persuaded me to study it. And then the next thing I, I, I found is the questions still were there and the questions are here. The same questions that uh, John Templeton had and the same questions you had but I am not willing to just let go of that question because Jesus says in John uh, you know that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free he doesn't say I will set you free so it's all about knowing the truth right but if you let go and say no this is something I don't understand my mother told me this then I, at least to me, that is not really the truth. That's all, you know, you're, doing, you're just swallowing everything. And the more, you see, more the Bible I read is asking the Holy Spirit, the parent, to explain, the more the revelation started coming and more it became alive to the point that now the way I look upon the Bible, upon myself, is every comma, every full stop, even the space, I, 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 I honor and, and, and treat it like the word of God and it's non-negotiable. But it didn't come just by, you know, my mother telling me. My mother didn't tell me. Anybody tell me. It was a self-discovery. So what happened is, can I see somebody's face? Andre, you are there looking now. I'm looking at uh, some blank. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm That's okay. If everybody puts on the camera, it'll be nice because I'm talking to human beings. But uh, uh, so, you know, otherwise I'll have to close my eyes and be in spirit only. So, uh, everybody in the mood, or are you every all in the mood for coffee this morning? Hello. No. All right. Everybody, ready? Yeah, 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 brother. Yeah. Okay. All right. So my coffee is getting cold here. Now, now I'm just going to, well, I'll, today's session I'll keep, well, I'll try to keep it crisp, okay? Not that short. I've already done sometimes, but I'll keep it crisp. Otherwise, next time, Brother Andre, you know, I'm here. 
you might say, oh my God, he, you know, it, it took a long time, but I'll keep it short and sweet. Now, a question like, let's, let's deal. Otherwise you will say, okay, he gave this big talk, whatever his testimony, and never approached the question he started. That is, if God knew, Adam and Eve would sin, and sin would come, and God has nothing to do with sin, right? And if Jesus, the lamb, is slain from the foundation of the world, we are told that Jesus died 2,000 years ago, no? Or did he die from the foundation of the world? Well, the Bible says foundation of the world, and we also know. He took communion, he died 2,000 years ago. 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes were healed, when were the stripes taken? To, from the foundation of the world, or 2,000 years ago? All right. Now, what, why does it happen that way? Now, this is a question. And this is what the, 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 the understanding that I got. All right. And this is very important. Now, the way the Holy Spirit explained it to me is this way. You know, a person has a, has a, has a child, a, a boy maybe, you know, let's use a boy. And uh, the father works very hard and utilizes all his time and resources to put him in the best school, to get him the best uh, tuition classes so that, you know, he would pass those board exams and then go on, hopefully, into college and get a good job, right? So now, what happens is he's spending his resources, he's spending his love, He's willing to do any sacrifice for this, this boy. But now assume this boy goes and just doesn't attend classes. Okay, he doesn't attend class throughout the year. He's like doing whatever, smoking cigarettes, maybe in sin. And now what happens? But the father keeps loving him and keeps loving him. And he's merciful, right? He's merciful. So boy keeps saying, you know, giving all kinds of lies, how these drug, you know, people are around. But father is merciful. Father knows this guy is not going to classes, but because of his nature, he's not like, you know, locking him up, calling the police and all that. He might have done that if it was a thief, but his own son, how can you do? Much like the prodigal son. Now a day comes the board exams. And this morning comes, like, I'm here at 5 o'clock, maybe you're at a better time. But let's say, whatever time the exam start 9, and it's like 8.30. Now, let me ask you a question I really appreciate. Is that boy going to pass, or is he going to fail? Hello? Is that boy going to pass or is he going to fail? He's going to fail. Oh, brother. Sister, you are so smart. How did you know? Are you a prophet? Prophetess? How did you know? No, it was a simple thing. He's never known what a book is. He's thrown his books out. He's never responsible. How can he go and pass? So what did you do just now? you projected from his behavior a certain outcome. You know, it's much like those who are using Amazon and all. You will see that when you're visiting a site, you go back, it'll tell you next time what you should buy. Or it's called, those who are familiar, it's called artificial intelligence. I'm talking about the word. You know, let's not put Bible on the, you know, just inside the church, okay? Let's get the Bible as we live in the world, okay? It's not like there is medicine and there is healing and there are two different worlds, no. It's all a continuum, all right? God only created all gravity and all the uh, things that there are there. Maybe it's recognized or people um, agree with it or they may say that they're just getting it through their old smarts. But it was created, you know, it's all science. Now, sister said that the boy would fail. The way she said it is because she used just a behavior that he doesn't know any studies. How can he go into the exam hall? How can he pass? 
no matter how hard the father prays, you know, we think just by prayer is going to change. It does, but also, you know, it doesn't in the sense you can't abuse one's body, drink it, you know, drink all alcohol and expect God to work it. It doesn't work, you know, because both the, see the physical element also, you know, does, does have a part to play. Huh? Law of gravity has a part to play. I mean, when, when Satan tempts Jesus in chapter 4 of Matthew, jump, I mean, the Satan is using Psalms 91, 12. You know, jump, no? Or do you not believe in Psalm 91, 12? The angels will look after you. And what does Jesus say? Okay? No. He says no. But what is Jesus' answer? You know, let's not get technical. The Jesus' answer is don't tempt God. Because that's in Deuteronomy. Now, there are two scriptures there, competing scriptures. Why? You mean the Satan was quoting a wrong scripture? No, he was quoting the Bible. And what was Jesus quoting? A Bible. Now, what was, which is the right scripture? You know what? It is the scripture you choose. And the reason Jesus chose the right, the scripture of Deuteronomy at that juncture is because if you were to just jump, it is like testing God. It is like saying it's a, it's a point of unbelief. God, I don't believe you. And therefore, I'm going to test you. I'm going to put you on test. Otherwise, you failed. So if that is the case, no, you should never use it because that's what Deuteronomy means when you say, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Now, the interpretation by your heart was one was like, I'm going to test God. Are you there? I don't believe you. Show, come on, show this miracle. Show this magic trick. God is not going to do a magic trick. So the, the, the heart condition by which he looked, so anyway, the point is gravity is created by God. Everything is created by his word. So if God announced the gravity just for the sake of somebody testing him, you know what it tantamounts to? It tantamounts to annulling his own word, which really equals to God telling a lie. And this Bible is very clear from the book of Numbers and Timothy and elsewhere that God cannot lie. No. Good morning. Can God not do anything? Yes, he cannot sin. He cannot lie. He's just. He can't do injustice. So there are limitations to God. Limitations he has brought upon himself. See why it's important for us to understand his limitations. If God has brought his limitations to himself because we want sometimes him to do things which are contrary to his word and we say, oh, that's the Bible. I know God because I've gone to some, somebody else through another system. You know, end of the day, you know, if we go to 20 systems and 20 preachers and all, the problem will be that there will be so many conflicting signals. So as for me, maybe with the mindset I come from, I rest my case and myself on this book. All right. So I'm coming back to now gravity and stuff. Now, why do you know? Let's go back to that example the Holy Spirit gave me about that boy failing. Because it's not like uh, the father could have just said in the morning at 8 39 and said, Lord, okay, I've been praying and fasting past my boy who's been sitting. Now, it's not that God is angry. He wants to pass that boy too, probably, but. It doesn't work that way, that the physical is annulled. See, that's the story, right? I said gravity. So what does that mean? Gravity pulls a plane? Yes. Now, but a plane flies, no, with all the people. So how does that work? See, there's a competing uh, power. Gravity is pulling the plane down. But when the plane moves into motion, there's a thrust and lift. Similarly. Romans 8, 2 said, yes, we had the law of death, sin and death, it says. That is from sin of Adam, not our sins. That's a DNA that came from Adam of sin and death. But we now have the law of life through Christ Jesus. Now, that means the exact equivalent picture is of Gravity pulling the plane down and this. So does gra is gravity nullified when the plane flies? No. It's uh, applicable on that whole plane. 
but there's a counter force. So similarly, so when somebody gets COVID-19, oh, COVID-19 is wrong? No. But point is, there's a counter force that 2,000 years ago, Jesus, by his stripes, we were healed. All right? So you apply that credit to this negativity, then it moves in. So 1 Peter 2, 24 kicks in. So that's how the system works, okay? The system doesn't work that it's, it's a Thursday, so God is in a bad mood, let's ask him on Sunday. It doesn't work. He's the same. James tells us that every only good things come from him, and there is no variance. There's no variance means there is no change. He's the same. He says it in Malachi. He says that, you know, everywhere. Jesus being the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So we've got to understand that God doesn't change the Old Testament and the New Testament and all that. But now, that's when you need to get to the Bible and understand that it's perfectly consistent. So that's, you know, one of the things that the Bible is the truth for simple reason that my experience tells me that it is perfect. There's no contradiction whatsoever. But it on the it's called in, in the legal language, it's called prima facie. It's on the face of it, it looks like contradiction. And that's what probably hit as we started John Templeton. That he said, Oh, wait a second, I'm teaching that God is love and all that. But what about that earthquake? What about the tragedies and that good man dying? God wasn't looking. So unless you see the Bible, no, it's not difficult, but our own thinking clouds the, the Bible because we've been programmed and, the, and Satan is absolutely, that's the only thing he's got. Because he's defeated on the cross, what he can do is confuse, misrepresent the Bible. So that's what I recognize that I told you on 23rd of February, 2006, when I got saved and I got the Bible, initially I felt, you know, I'd seen all Christians around me, that there was inconsistency and a mismatch between the Bible and the religion. Now, what happened is I saw Andrew Womack approaching it as an affair. Apart from what he taught, the attitude was fair. The attitude was he was willing and willing to Bring out the truth from the Bible rather than just take it and shove it down, guy. No, no, no. That's not true. Let the Holy Spirit convict you about it. And then, you know, well, Andrew Womack was in America. But at the time I used to live in India. Uh, all that is true. But how am I supposed to see? I didn't, I didn't get this all from my mother, okay? Please. She had no part. I didn't get this from my society. I got this all from the Holy Spirit myself. Now, I'm not saying in terms of pride. Yes, it was a privilege, but the 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 the, the disadvantage was it took a little time because there was a sort of foreign atmosphere to me about this. Something that my my academic background all sort of rejected. So I had to overcome different sort of battles in my mind. But then they helped me have more faith and trust the you know, trust in the Lord with trust the Bible with all my heart. Because I saw that yes, there were times I don't understand everything, even now. Do I know everything? No. I may not have arrived, but I have left. So I know it's it's too infinite. It's like Paul says that, you know, we don't know all things now, but we will one day. So, yes, there are things we don't know, but that doesn't mean that we don't know the basic things. All right? We don't question everything. So, the questioning in the Bible is an important angle. That's why Mother Mary says, the first thing is, how can this be that I know no man? See, that's a questioning. She didn't say, okay, I believe whatever you say. No, but then she realizes it and she mulls over it, and the testimony of Elizabeth persuades her, and then she does make a decision. And then she says, yes, she probably has read the Bible before, okay? I don't think she is, though she was young, I think she must, it's clearly because, because she affirms her faith in the word. Let it be done according to thy word, she says, okay? 
and uh, that's the style. So, because there's a picture by Leonardo da Vinci, which I would have liked to get, of Mother Mary studying the Bible. I just came across that a few times. Now, that's not really in the Bible, but I like that picture. You know, that she, she is, she may not be a Bible scholar, but she gets it all from the word of God. Now, and he, she had to, okay, she was Jewish. So it was Jewish as if you've gone to Israel and all, there's no statue, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. It's all pure word. It's on word and they just, you know, are very obsessed with being only in the spirit and they're only in the word. Now, coming back to the, the point I said, if God knew that Adam and Eve would sin, why did he go through this creation of making a mess? Why did he, and then how come the Lamb of God was sacrificed from the foundation of the world? God, does he know everything? Now, what does he mean by everything? He determines everything. So if somebody is going to sin, going to hell, he determines you go to hell. So did he make Adam and Eve sin? Or did he give them a choice? You know, we can't have both ways, all right? And you can't have it both ways. You can't say God, you know, uh, does uh, well in a way didn't give him choice, and because he knew they were going to sin, but also he gives us choice to choose. Don't have it. What I see that that you know that what I said was uh, which was in uh, uh, which was that that was in um, Revelations thirteen eight foundation that G the Lamb was uh, slain from the foundation of the world. And also, we started with Isaiah 46.10, when God says, I know the end from the beginning. What he means is not that he determines. He didn't determine, okay, Adam and Eve, you sin. Otherwise, you're giving us. No, it doesn't, it doesn't make us, he doesn't tell us to sin. He hopes that Adam and Eve wouldn't sin. But, his ability, his wisdom, his, his intelligence is so super that he can project and see that when he creates man, it is he is going to sin. Now, he doesn't make him sin. He gives him the choice. But now he creates man, he's going to sin. Now, we took that example which the Holy Spirit said of that boy. There's no way he can pass. Right? So same, there's no way Adam and Eve would pass. The reason is, in Jeremiah, we told the heart of man is terribly wicked. So, did God create, uh, you know, that kind of a man? Or whatever He created, He created man. Now, why did He create man? The Bible says for His own pleasure. What is it? That's why the Bible refer, refers so much to the bridegroom bride. It's not an analogy. God wants to be one with us. All right. Now, God wants to be one with us. Let's not look in the physical way, but in a spirit way. Remember I said spirit, soul, and body? That's why when we get born again, his, it says one spirit huh, in Corinthians. So his spirit and our spirit joins. And that is the point. It's not that we're going to have, you know, it's not a, after this, there'll be a marriage ceremony and all that. That's the oneness. We have God living in us at this juncture. Now, let's go back and see the Adam and Eve story. Now, why did Adam and Eve, uh, they sinned? And God knew that sin would enter the world. And then all mankind, there'd be so many killings and messes and all that all over. Now, why did he go through this? And I was asking this question. You know why? And this is, I mean, I can say it simply, but I don't want you to take it simply. And that is, he loved man so much. He knew that man would sin. And because he, 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 he loved man so much that he even made a provision that man would be saved. That before the world was created, he made a provision of Slaying the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Now he made a provision because he knew that there was, when he created man, there would be no salvation for him. 
because there would be sin. So he gave his only begotten son. And you know, that's that John 3.16 is a powerful verse for one reason to me. The only begotten. You know what that means? Only. Sometimes tend to forget it. That means, see, if you've got two sons, you know, what happens? And you give one son's property, it's 50%. But if you could only, you know, it's all of him he gave. So can you, you know, we think in our own experiences, the boy and mother, and we are not able to comprehend the infinite love that is God. The Bible talks about it. I mean, there's so much breath with, let's not try to see it. But we can only through these things, we can sort of get an inference. Coming back to this Adam and Eve, he knew that there was no salvation for man. And he saw that he was no, he would fail the exam no matter that like that boy I gave, and this is the way the Holy Spirit told me, he would fail that exam no matter what he did. Because that boy was inherently playful, sinful, and all that. No matter how much the parent tried to work on him. Now, what do you do? What do you do in that case? Well, you get his brother to take the exam. So, we didn't pass. Man didn't pass. But Jesus took the exam for us. So, that's what happened. So, that's the plan. All right. Why does he, why did he make it plan? Because of his love to be one with us. That's why the first commandment is, you know, love the God with all your heart, mind, soul. Now it's not that, you know, it's like, saying, I'll, you know, otherwise I'll put some handcuffs on you. Actually, the, the, the thing is, it all comes back to God loves us. And what, what does, what does somebody who loves somebody else want? He wants that and only one thing God wants. Okay. He wants us to love him in the return and to be one with him. All right. Sometimes people say, oh, I asked this, and I know these people, some of them, ask, uh, 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 Brother Andre also knows. So I all, often ask them the question. This was a long time ago. Uh, why does God, you know, do all these things for us? And the answer was, well, so we can teach and we can preach. So, teach, preach, that's we do as a reaction of our love. But even if you were to teach back, you know, if we are sinners also, he loves us. Not the sin. And that's why Jesus died. He didn't die for good people. He didn't die because we were good or we are lovable. He died because God loves us. And when it is an unconditional love, no, that's called love. That's called the type of love. All right. He loved us first. So <clears throat> the, the, what I was teach, what I was saying is it all hinges on the love of God. So if you take that fuse out, no, no matter how much we do with the electricity, nothing's going to come. And that's when Jesus says in Matthew 7, 22, many came to me and did all these wonders. And I said, get out. It's because they didn't seek the relationship, which is also in the definition of eternal life that you will know. Didn't seek that relationship with God that he wants us to know. How can we love somebody we don't know? And especially, you must worship. And that, uh, that can be extended to everything, to love and everything. God in spirit and truth. And thrill, spirit and truth I said, right? I mean, it's not some, you can't shove it down. When it's truth, you understand it. And then you know it's truth, right? Otherwise, how do you know two truths? How do you know if a counterfeit and a wrong? And that's how Satan works, huh? I mean, he shows the same thing that looks exactly like the truth but he counterfeits it but you got to get beyond that counterfeiting system because the bible tells us that uh, the you know satan is dressed as an angel of light and that's what he does but the point i'm trying to <clears throat> get across is the first commandment and the first commandment is important because because that's the objective of god and that's why jesus Apart from Deuteronomy, he says that in Matthew, that this is the great first and greatest commandment. Now, greatest is not great. It means most important. And most important is that's where the most important thing goes. That God and us are one. And he has succeeded. All right. Why has he succeeded? Because Jesus 
fulfilled a commandment. Now, if you're asking, but then that's what our born again. We are buried in Christ and born again in Christ. So have we taken the exam? No, we have not taken the exam. But have we passed it? Yeah, because Jesus took the exam. All right. So it all comes from there. Understanding who we are now, not in ourselves. We no longer live, right? Galatians 2.20 or Colossians 3.3. I'm dead. So point is, I'm dead by myself. So it's all about being dead to oneself. So anyway, so that's, 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 that's the whole point about creation. It is not that God predetermines anything. It is that he knows everything. And he, he always, you know, because that's the love. See, when you love somebody, say somebody loves a woman and he wants to get married, there are two ways. Lock her up, force her, or uh, ask her to uh, uh, pursue her till she loves him in return and agrees. So the gentle way, the loving way, is God pursues us. That's why the Song of Solomon and all that, you know, it, it is it is a embodiment of God's love for us. It's not some you know book on on chasing one man chasing a woman and all that. It's he's totally passionate. Therefore, he says in twelve twenty seven and elsewhere and elsewhere. I can go on that subject. He says our God is a consuming fire. The minute I would ask you know in my other groups, what's a consuming fire? They would say, oh heaven, hell. Wait, listen. You just take a flip to Deuteronomy. It says, our God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Why is he jealous? It's like a jealous lover. Well, lover means, you know, we, we try to think in terms of how human beings go, but we are dealing in spirit now. We are a spirit, he's a spirit. And therefore, we are now one spirit. So, I, uh, that's all I wanted to share today, brother, in a nutshell.